Hello and welcome once again to Shepherd of the Valley's Sunday service on this, the first day of November, All Saints Sunday. This is a time when we remember the saints in our church and in our lives from past to present and even some in the future, but that definition will probably be different than you're used to if you're new to us, so we're glad that you're here to hear this marvelous story. We're going to share communion today, so if you'd like to pause the video and get bread and wine or whatever you have to share that sacrament together, you are welcome to do so. We are glad you are here with us. Let us participate in our opening song. As we prepare our hearts to receive God's words, let us pray together the prayer of the day. Almighty God, you have knit your people together in one communion in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Grant us grace to follow your blessed saints in lives of faith and commitment, and to know the inexpressible joys you have prepared for those who love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Our Lord comes among us this day through the words of the Gospel of Matthew, the fifth chapter. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up to the mountain, and after he sat down, the disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. 
Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The Gospel of our Lord. Now last week during Reformation Sunday, we talked about the need of the church to reform or become something new, to start again, which begs the question, where do we start? I would argue that this gospel for All Saints Sunday from Matthew chapter five is a fantastic place. In it, Jesus is talking to his disciples and describing God blessing or caring for a whole host of people whom you would not otherwise view as privileged or good or blessed. People who are mourning or sad or empty or underfed or a hundred other things that are described here. People whom the world despises, Jesus says, are blessed people you don't want to be in the shoes of. Jesus says, God loves. Now this is going to be confusing to people who view scripture simply as a rule book, as a series of instructions to follow, as a book that defines some people who follow it as insiders or believers or whatever you want to say, and some people who don't as outsiders or despised or rejected. We always have problems when Jesus says, you know what, if there's an inside or an outside, God sits with the outsiders. But us having problems with it doesn't make it untrue. God is actually redefining who is blessed, who is in, who is loved and embraced in this message. Put another way, God is redefining who gets to be a saint. Now, saints are a prime example of this uh, tendency toward insider or outsiderness. We think of saints, obviously, as people with big statues, holy people whom churches are named after. Those people are saints. No argument about that. If your church is St. John's or St. Peter's or whatever, it's not misnamed. Cool. That said, Jesus claims those aren't the only people who are blessed. Those aren't the only people who get to be saints. That person that you pass on the street, that the rest of the world is ignoring. God is not ignoring. That person is also blessed. And the more hurting, and the more empty and the more lonely we are, the more God pays attention to the love that God pours into us because we need it. And when we need to be loved, no matter who we are, God says yes. Just as last week we talked about the Lutheran tendency toward reform, this week we can encapsulate this story in a very peculiar but very important claim that we Lutherans make about our relationship with God and our relationship with each other. We say that we are saints and sinners both. All of us at the same time are saints and sinners together. Why do we say this? It's actually pretty simple. If any of us were such a saint that we were perfect, absolutely nothing wrong with us, the holiest person who ever lived, why would that person need any God but themselves? 
If they were perfect, there would be no need for salvation. There would be no need for reading or learning or taking in anything. They would be self-contained and alone which ironically is exactly the promise that the serpent made in the Garden of Eden to Adam and Eve if they ate the fruit, didn't happen that way. None of us are perfect and none of us are alone. Saying that we are saints alone would be the same as saying we need no God and therefore we wouldn't be saints. But saying that we are only sinners takes away God's power to transform us. It's saying that we're only empty, that we're only imperfect, that we're only broken, and nothing else matters except our brokenness. That's just the same as saying nothing else matters except our own perfection, just put the other way around. Instead, we claim that we are not the center of the universe, neither in our goodness, neither in our badness. Neither one of those things really defines who we are. All of us are a mixture of both. All of us are broken people who are also beautiful. We are both at the same time. And God works by telling the truth about our brokenness and acknowledging it, not calling our brokenness perfection, but God also works in filling up those broken spots with grace and love and goodness that pour out through them. And so at the same time, we say we are saints and we are sinners. But look what that does now to our community. If saints can't be put on a wall and everybody says, oh, be like him. If sainthood is not a matter of being morally perfect or following all the rules or whatever, if we all just admit that we are broken and beautiful, first of all, we're all together. Second of all, there is no division between us. We have a basis, I think, to judge whether a certain action is harming a community more than another action, and to react appropriately, of course. Failing to brush your teeth is not the same as murdering somebody, and we react differently to those two things. Fine. At the same time, the existence of cavities and the existence of crimes does not change who we are are we are both saints and sinners and we belong together we don't have a basis for saying i believe harder or i've been in a church longer or i'm more morally right than you so god loves me and god doesn't love you we don't have a basis for saying, I have more material goods, or I'm smarter, or I'm better at doing these certain tasks that society values, so God loves me more than God loves you. Instead, we say, I'm a saint, and I am also imperfect. You are a saint, and you are also imperfect. We acknowledge our imperfections together, and then we acknowledge also that we are God's beloved people together. And from that large group that spans all of humanity of saints and sinners, we find our community, our brothers and sisters, we find the family in which we belong. And our churches and our communities are based on that truth and that love and that identity and not on anything else that we would choose to exalt ourselves over our neighbor. God looks at us and says, yeah, yeah, you're broken. I can see it. God looks at us and says, and I also love you and fill you every day. And that's what other people are meant to see 
in you. What a beautiful starting place that everyone who hears this message might not go out into the world and look at ways to protect or isolate or divide themselves from other people, but might go out into the world looking to see God's beloved children and saying, I see you, and I see you, and I see you. And even if the whole world puts walls in between you, I know that you are full of love and you are full of beauty and let us share that together. For that is our godly call as his blessed children. Think about that this week and ask yourselves whether the divisions that you want to draw between you and your neighbors really are protecting you from fear and isolation and loneliness and emptiness, or whether those divisions are actually causing those things. And when you look around the world, do not see people that you need to be afraid of because they'll take what's yours. Instead, say, I have nothing that's mine that isn't broken, and yet I have the love of God for me and for you, and that is what I will view the world through, and that is what I will give and receive from others. May you have a blessed week, saints of God, broken though you are, broken though I am. Those flaws and that brokenness will not define us. Let us go and be defined by God's love, now and forevermore. Amen.
Having heard God's word, we gather now in prayer for the church, the world, and all those in need. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O Lord, for the saints who have gone before us, those who have raised and nurtured us in faith and trust toward you, those who have poured their compassion and love into us so that we in turn may pour compassion and love into the world. Those who have been examples of your light and goodness, those who have upheld us quietly in the moments that we've needed it. We give you thanks for the gifts that you give to all your children, and we pray that you encourage and allow us to share those gifts with each other freely. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We also give thanks on this day for those who have gone to their rest, those saints who have been redeemed by you, who have been washed clean in the waters of baptism, of death and resurrection, and who now rejoice in your name and in your presence. We pray for those from this congregation who have gone to their rest in the past year. Kay Morse, Scott Spencer, Eleanor Foster. We also pray for all those saints whom we uplift with our hearts or voices in this moment now. Give us comfort, O Lord, that we will not be separated from our loved ones forever, that our destiny is to be with you and all of your children in a life of peace, love, and joy that does not end. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for those still walking this journey who are suffering, those who are without homes, those who are without jobs, those who don't have enough food or clean water, those who are oppressed or neglected or marginalized. We pray also for victims of abuse and violence and warfare. We pray for those suffering illness, mental illness, emotional despair. We also pray for those who are afflicted by COVID-19 or who live in fear of same, or who are suffering from life-changing diagnoses this week. Help us remember that we are all your saints filled by you and that no circumstance of this life can take away our identity as beloved children of God. And help us as we look out into the world to see your children and to offer care and hope to each other in your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for the upcoming elections in the United States. Guide us to make wise choices, compassionate choices, choices that help us to look out for each other and the welfare not just of ourselves, but of all the people around us. Keep us safe and help your goodness be expressed through our system of government and through governments and leaders throughout the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And as your children, we offer up our own prayers now, either in our hearts or with our voices, the prayers and concerns we have for you this day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now we prepare to receive our Lord together through the sacrament of communion, where the universal and divine God comes to us in our particular lives through bread and wine, which we take in a long with God's Spirit and the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that fills us up 
with God's grace and allows us to pour out that grace to the world. So we invite you to gather your bread and wine and to share this sacrament together. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. As we receive our Lord, let us pray together the prayer that God taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now we invite you to turn to those with you and offer them the bread and the cup, and they can offer you the same, saying the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. And if you are alone, no worries, you may partake as I offer the elements to you now. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace now and forevermore. Amen. And now, fellow beloved children of God, may your week be full of God's love, and may you carry that love with you and share it with everyone around you. You can find more of what we do at myboisechurch.org or on Facebook at SOV Boise. We hope to see you there during the week, and until we meet again here next week, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Be safe. Be well. God bless. At this point in our service, we are going to introduce and commission our new commissioned visitors. And we have with us Pastor Kelly Loy, who along with Linda Pechtel is leading our commissioned visitors program. Let's go ahead and take it away, Kelly. Hello, it's so nice to meet you all and to be part of this ministry at Shepherd of the Valley. So my name is Kelly Loy and I am an ordained minister. I am doing pastoral counseling at this point in Boise through Shared Path Counseling. And I also am supporting the Commissioned Visitors Ministry here at Shepherd of the Valley. I will be helping to train the visitors and encourage them and be an ongoing support in this really valuable lay ministry that we're inviting many of you to take part in as being a connection with us as your pastors in reaching out to people in your congregation who are needing more connection especially in this time as the pandemic continues. I'm really glad to be here to be connecting with you and with your commission visitor team to really support this um, just continued sense of community at Shepherd of the Valley. Thank you, it's nice to meet you all. My name is John Lawson. My wife Meg and I live east of CUNA out in the country and we've been going to Shepherd of the Valley for the last 20 years. The last six or seven of those I've been a commission visitor. 
I enjoy the commission visitation ministry because it allows me to take the word from Shepherd of the Valley out to folks that can't otherwise make it. I can come to your home and or to the hospital and, I, and I've done a lot of communion. Hope to see you sometime. I'm Kathy Oden, I'm a commission visitor. When COVID came and some of the groups were canceled at church, I missed seeing those people and the camaraderie. Uh, looking through the church newsletter, I thought that joining this, the visitation group would fill that void. Hello, I'm Jim Gervin, and I'm very honored to be a commission visitor for Shepherd of the Valley Lutheran. My wife Georgia and I moved to Boise in 1999 when I became Dean of the College of Health Sciences at Boise State and we have uh, worshipped at Shepherd of the Valley ever since. I am uh, looking forward to bringing communion and visiting those who cannot readily access our services. Thank you again for this opportunity and blessings to you all. Hello, I'm Sylvia Morris, and I'm amazed to remember that I've been in this church for some 40 years. And during that time, I visited many shut-ins to give them communion and words of hope. And this year, we've had some such good training from pastors Carey, Kelly, and Linda. And so I'm really anxious to get back to be able to meet people in person and to give them more words of comfort and to be able to take them uh, communion and to give them a big hug. Hi, my name is Linda Worden. I've been on the commissioned visitors team for about a year, and I've been a member at Shepherd of the Valley for about 20 years. I usually attended second service, so people may recognize me from that service. And I'm happy to be continuing work on the commissioned visitors team. Having met our commissioned visitors and the leaders who are participating in this ministry, we will now install them into visitation ministry at Shepherd of the Valley. Dear Christian friends, baptized into the priesthood of Christ, we all are called to offer ourselves to the Lord of the Church in thanksgiving for what he has done and continues to do for us. It is our privilege to recognize and support those who are engaged in the work of this congregation, especially in the ministry of commissioned visitation. As the Congregation of Shepherd of the Valley Lutheran Church, recognizing this visitation ministry, will you follow our Lord's example of humble service and support these commissioned visitors. On behalf of the Shepherd of the Valley Congregation, yes, we will, and we ask God to help us. Let us pray. God of majesty, whom saints delight to worship in heaven and on earth, bless the ministry of those serving as commissioned visitors that we may know the joy of your presence and may worship to the glory of your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, source of wisdom and knowledge, help us to study your word diligently and to grow in your love and in all that is good. Support all who visit, all who benefit from those visits, that together we may know and do your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord God of our salvation, it is your will that all people might come to you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Inspire our witness to him, that all may know the power of his forgiveness and the hope of his resurrection through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And you can find much more about our church and everything we do at our website, myboisechurch.org, or find us on Facebook at SOV Boise. Until we meet again, may your week be blessed and full of love and grace.
我。